the uh, June Odd 8 exam. We're on page 10, question 48. The diagram below represents a transverse wave traveling to the right through a medium. Point A represents a particle of the medium. Okay. In which direction will particle A move in the next instant of time? Now, a lot of people miss these kind of questions. I think they, uh, they want to be on a jet ski or something, uh, riding up the hill or something. But uh, if you think about what causes a wave in the first place, it's the medium moving up and down. And as it travels, it, it produces this wave pattern. So if I'm a medium right here, and the wave begins to move, which way do I have to go to stay with the wave? And the answer would be, let's say, here it is, in the next moment of time, I have to move downwards in order to stay with the medium. So in which direction will the particle move? It has to move down. Question 49. Which graph best represents the relationship between the photon energy and a photon frequency? Well, graphs are just division problems. So let's find a formula. We're into modern physics. It says an energy of a photon is equal to HF, Planck's constant, times the frequency. So energy equals HF. So if uh, F is 1, energy is 1. If F is 2, energy is 2. If F is 3, energy is 3. So if we graphed energy versus frequency, it would be a direct relationship. The slope of which would be Planck's constant, because energy divided by frequency would be Planck's constant from that formula. So uh, let's go find that graph. Energy of photons stays the same. Energy goes up directly. That's the right answer. Energy goes down. That's not right. Energy goes down. That's not right. Correct answer there. Base your answers to 50 and 51 on the table below, which shows data about various subatomic particles. Oh, man. Okay, there's our graph. I don't know what any of these things mean. Well, proton I've got, neutron I understand, but the rest of them I've never heard of. Well, I have, but... All right. Which particle listed on the table has the opposite charge of and is more massive than a proton? Well, here's a proton. It's positively charged. And here's the mass. The antiproton is negatively charged, but it's the same mass. So we come down to this omega particle, which is made up of three strange quarks. And it's negatively charged, opposite, and more massive. So the correct answer has to be the omega. And uh, do -do -do, lambda omega. There it is. I don't know what it is, but I got the right answer. And five, all the particles listed on this table are classified as. Well, we have another chart for the classification of matter. And uh, matter is broken into two groups, hadrons and the leptons. The hadrons are broken into two categories, the baryons and the mesons. The mesons are made up of a quark and an antiquark, and the baryons are made up of three quarks. So if we go back and look, at the quark content, we find that each of these is made up of three quarks. So that would make each one of these a baryon. Well, that's not one of the choices. So we look at our chart again. They're baryons, and those are all hadrons. And there we go. We have hadrons. Now we look at the other choices. Mesons are also hadrons, but they are only a quark and an antiquark. So mesons is not correct. Antimatter, um, and that's true of some of these, but not of all of these. And leptons, the most famous of the lepton is the electron. See over here the uh, leptons, there's the electron. And so uh, it's not leptons either. 
So of the choices given, hadrons is the best answer.